Um, one question, because we didn't know how to prepare the presentation. So the question is, how deep you want to go into technology? Or if you think it's better to have a general overview first, and then maybe deep into the details we are interested in. Uh, I see that many people in the audience is already familiar in Giffinet, but others are new. So shall we make a general short uh, brief? And then, right, this is a presentation we have prepared. And I'm using the slides more or less uh, for a presentation we have next week in Brussels, at the, at the Commission. So it will be a bit formal, but hopefully it will work. So uh, this presentation, we, I, we, I've prepared this presentation ready to face this, this situation where we have a general overview, and then we will have a look in detail. For this, we will use uh, another presentation and another slide. So uh, what we are doing? Essentially, this is a citizen project where technology has a space, but also other disciplines, like law, like economics, and stuff like that. Yeah, and we are, in the end, we are de deploying a network. So, for instance, builders, uh, people installing antennas, all these kind of people are also needed and part of the game. I, uh, we, before Getting into the project, let's ha have a, you know, a look at the impact so far of what we have done. And these are the statistics from, in, uh, from a, a third party source. This is the, the IDESCAT, this is the Institute for Statistics of Catalonia. Uh, they collect data about everything. And in the year 2013, they run uh, a set of questionnaires <coughs> all over Catalonia to know about the presence and usage of the internet. And they were asking many questions, and amongst them, there was these two. Do you have internet connection and broadband access? So th these were two questions. So, uh, and interestingly here, well, we have the averages of the EU in average. <coughs> uh, so this is, in average, above 78% of the people in the EU says, say that they have both internet access and broadband at home. If we look at Catalonia, the situation is a bit worse, and we are below 74%. But looking at <laughs> Spanish average, we are, we are even in a worse, a worse situation. And these are the counties of Catalonia. This is where this specific data source comes into the play. And interestingly, Usona is the only county where we are in the average of the EU. So we are above the rest of the counties. And not only this, if we look at the bars, we see that in this county is the only county where the people say they have broadband, broadband access, but maybe not internet. This is why the red bar is above the, the, the blue bar, okay? <coughs> and why I'm focusing on, on, in Ozona? Because Ozona is where Gifinet was started, and where it's more developed at the moment. Maybe, and this is, I, I, I don't recall the numbers exactly, but Probably at, at least well, maybe just one fourth of the population in Arizona should have internet, uh, uh, give internet access. This is a uh, a number that I must check. But anyway, um, so we must uh, find an explanation for this. It's we think it's because of the presence of GIFINET. We have other statistics that prove that GIFINET is, is complementary to the standard ISPs. We are, not com we are not directly competing with ISPs. We are complementing those gray and dark zones they live unattended. Okay, uh, so next slide, please. So this is a summary, fast summary. So 
the project is not just about we could or we can. It's about doing real things. It's about, in the end, it's about climbing roofs and deploying antennas or digging trenches and deploying fiber cables or climbing telephone posts and deploying aerial fiber cables there. Okay? Uh, this is uh, the growth in, in number of nodes. This is the year 2004 where the project was started. This is currently 2015. And this is in terms of thousands. And this is 30,000. So at the moment, we are about 30,000 operating nodes all over not only Catalonia. The nice thing is that the message is spreading at least all over Spain. And probably, and we are putting a lot of efforts, also going outside of Spain. Currently, the main distribution is in Catalonia. Yes, central Catalonia, and here in the zona and the north east. But also, it's interesting to see a lot of commitment here in Delta de Lebre, but also below the Catalan border in Valencia, Castelló, they are de deploying a lot, uh, very, uh, a lot of nodes. Also in Palma, there's uh, some deployments, and this is the interesting thing, that the project can be adopted. Once you get the message, if you like it, there are the tools in place for you to realize the, the project wherever you want. So here we could say, somehow, that Kifinet is to networks what uh, the free software is for computers. Okay, so if you like free software, you can download the distribution, install the distribution, and then start installing applications you like. Here, you can, through the tools, we will, we will go through, you can uh, know which devices you have to buy, where you have to place them, how to set them up, and then starting putting your own services on top. Because we are talking about a, a, a symmetric network. It's important. It's not asymmetric. We think that we have the same right to consume and to produce. This is a, 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 the aggregate uh, traffic we are exchanging with other networks, also the internet. The, in the next slide, we will see the network architecture. This is just to give you some numbers and how it, the, the, the growth. This is the exponential growth we observe in the number of nodes over time. We also see this exponential growth in traffic. This is aggregated. In one, well, this is the inbound and this is the outbound. It's interesting because it's about one fourth the, the, the outbound is uh, the inbound traffic, it's one fourth of the, the outbound. It means that we are, compared to the standard user, uh, end user statistics of the traditional ASPs, we are rather successful in producing content. I'm not uh, fun to stay stick to the presentation, the, 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 the bullets, so if you have any question at any point, just raise your hand or go straight and ask. So, interesting, we have estimated a uh, total inversion, uh, investment in, in the infrastructure above 7 million euros. So, this is uh, just to give you some order of magnitudes of different variables. And uh, the investment to maintain all this running is about uh, 200,000 euros per month. So you may expect with these numbers that there's, uh, there should be a, a business ecosystem behind this, like in free software. There, there are many companies investing in, the, in developing the kernel and developing applications. For a project, it's essential, at least according to our pre uh, ideas, it's essential to have a, a business model behind. Otherwise, projects are not sustainable. Right, maybe we can jump to the next slide. So this is the network architecture, what we are doing. So we want to reach all the citizens in Catalonia. We don't want to exclude anybody. We empower the people to bring the network at their homes, at their places, at their offices, at their whatever. How do we do that? Okay, the reality nowadays is that the, the, the wholesale ISPs are all concentrated in Barcelona. So we must reach Barcelona. That's, that's it. 
We are already in Barcelona. We have a, a position in the Collocation Center. We are also members of our local exchange point, the CATNICS, the Catalan Exchange Point. So there we peer with other ISPs. And the transit we cannot deliver by peering, we have default gateways to the internet. Maybe we are going too fast here. Do you all understand what Infinet is? Do you know about it before coming here? So, do you understand that this Infinet is not internet, it's a different thing. Infinet is a network, it's like a self-managed network by the same users who are using it. And Definet is not any organization or any company, any foundation. Definet is a project where anyone can join. So uh, there are many, many volunteers which are making this possible. And uh, it started as a project from some people living in the rural area where they didn't have internet access. The ISPs Telefonica, for instance, were not interested on, on, on connecting those people to the internet because it's not, uh, worth, not good. The revenue worth, is very low. Not good for the, the return for the of investment, investment. So they started to make their own uh, network between several farms and several houses. And it starts growing around all the, in Catalonia, and Valencia, and many other places in Spain. And, uh, yeah, the objective of Kifinet is actually is not to have internet access. It's to create a parallel uh, network which follows three, three principles, which are freedom, neutrality, and openness. So uh, you cannot, no one can ask you for money to connect to the, to the network. No one can prioritize the, the traffic to another user. And uh, there has not to be an uh, so artificial uh, to say, artificial barriers, barriers to, to connect to the network. But it, it, it doesn't mean that inside the network there can coexist a business model. So you cannot ask for money to enter to the network, but you can ask for money if you are offering some service inside the network. For instance, the internet access is a service inside the network. But in addition to the internet access, we have more services like uh, voice over IP or file sharing or chat or anything that you can imagine. However, the most used service in the network is the internet access, of course. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Okay. So, if I just need uh, Voice over IP uh, uh, use case, and I'm connected to uh, this uh, <coughs> network. I can I can use it for free. Uh, it depends. If the voice over IP service is for free, you can use it for free. But there are also some companies which are deploying voice over IP services uh, that you have to pay. Then maybe you have to call. you can call any place in the world, for instance. But the, the bandwidth I use in the network, <coughs> uh, I don't know about that. That's to go through the network. Uh, the network? That's not free. Uh, how, is, how, how do you make that free? Well, it's free if you call someone inside the network. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, yeah. But if you want to go outside of the network, maybe you have to pay. But when I'm using bandwidth of this network, in, inside the network. Yeah, just to. No, it's a resource you're consuming. It's a resource yeah. that. But we agree that this resource is free. Okay. Yeah. So I contribute. When we say free, it's free. As a as, uh, <laughs> it, it's free speech, no, not as free as a beer. Huh? It's like free software. I mean, somebody has to pay the coders. Otherwise, they can code at night, but they produce, the, the production capacity is reduced. If, if we pay them, they will produce more. Right? It's the same. We, we, we have to pay our routers, our equipment to have the network. But the, 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 the thing is that when we have these routers, when we have devices, these devices, the, the cables, all the, the infrastructure pay, 
they use it just for free. All right? And this is the, the, the agreement. We, we will go through this. I was starting from the internet because I thought that maybe it's easier for the people, but uh, I totally... What should my tenant and we said like to 1,000 euros per month? Yes. Uh, includes uh, what? The maintenance right. of the hardware. Uh, and yes. Yes, because... Uh, not, not any internet connection? Uh, no. This, is, this goes aside. Okay. Uh, yeah, there is not a default internet connection. Yeah. Internet. Here, in this, in this network, you won't see a default crowd in your routing table. Okay. So, yeah. If you want to reach internet, you, you have to find a way to reach internet. So, there are many so, ways So, maybe we'll take the, the, the presentation and then we jump to the questions. Yeah, but you, you were talking about the I was talking the exchange about the, point. Maybe. I was talking about the exchange you point. You should explain what... What an exchange point is, okay. So, how do we connect or how do... How in the internet is created? Paying a DSL fee every month? Connecting I mean. different networks? Yes, exactly. Internet is the network of networks. And how it, this interconnection is made? Because this is about internet working. So, if we have a network A here and a network B here, we need a, somewhere a connection point, a physical point where these two networks merge and then a, a specific configuration to make the users of network B see the users of network A and vice versa. Okay? And this is the peering, the peering process. The, the connections are made usually in, at the exchange points. Take them as the markets where people go go to sell and buy. It's exactly the same. The ISPs reach uh, reach the exchange points, and then once there, they start talking the, to the rest of ISPs in that exchange, particular exchange point, and asking them if they want to peer. But this you, this way you can reach just a certain amount of ISPs. Then there are these wholesale carriers and that provides, they have peering agreements with the rest of the ISPs, or at least <coughs> daisy chaining them, you can reach everybody. And then this is the what you call the, the default rule. So if you cannot go through your peering, you go you send your traffic to the default rule. Okay? And the ISPs so, are paying to this carrier. So this is what is happening here, okay? So here we are reaching all the world through these wholesale ISPs and we are paying for them. They are offering us a service which is called internet access, okay? So once we have the internet here, how do we propagate, how do we spread this internet? This is the full, uh, this is the territorial transport. How we reach these, let's say, territorial exchanges, exchange points. This is so. This is the Catalan exchange point or the global for us. And then once we have the internet here, we must propagate it or spread it through the territory. This is done by fibers, okay. And at the moment we are hiring direct fiber to do this. And this is how we reach these points. And at the moment, there are 18 of these points all over Catalonia. These points are set by people of a certain area that gather together and put the money required to reach the budget to make this a reality. Okay? Because we have this peering agreement inside. So you can take, it in this sense, you can take Ethernet as a distributed exchange point. Because we have the peering agreement or the license, which says exactly what we were discussing about uh, before. We won't charge anybody for the transit. It's the same happening at the exchange points. You just pay for the service to be at the exchange point. You don't pay for the traffic you exchange with your peers. It's exactly the same. Definet is a, in this sense, it's a distributed exchange point. So. One guy from here, 
he can reach the north east from the south west to the northeast for free. Okay? And then we must we okay, we are now we are at the territorial exchange points. How do we reach the end users? Here it's more about imagination. Some sometimes you have fibers, <coughs> other, other, uh, some other times you use Wi-Fi or other means. Technology for us is just a mean to implement our idea. So we use whatever is available. We start with Wi-Fi because it was the cheapest and the most easy or accessible technology at that time. It's still. It's still. But if we compare the performance between fiber and Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi performs thousand times better than Wi-Fi. This is why the, the, the people who know that Wi-Fi works, or they rely already in Gipinet, many people are migrating to fiber. Okay? There are some villages in Arizona, the entire village where the optical fiber has been deployed to all the houses inside the village. And this optical fiber is from the Gipinet project, so it follows the three principles and it respects the license. And interestingly, you keep the ownership of the net, the, the, the infrastructure deployed at the company. Okay? And at full speed. You can use it at full speed. Okay? So maybe we can jump to the next It's slide. funny to see now the Telefonica internet access, which are offering optical fiber, 100 megabits, and 10, uh, 10 megabits per globe. Optical fiber is symmetric by, by definition. So they are artificially applying policies to reduce the, the channel capacity. Huh? Just to make you pay more if you want, for instance, a symmetrically. Okay, let's go ahead. Well, well, I'll adjust the number, for instance. In our core network at the moment, for instance, it's already running at 10 gigabits. So, because now you can have 10 gigabits for the cost of what you had 100 megabits two years ago. Okay. An inter another interesting thing of the fiber is that once you have the cable deployed, you just have to change the electronics at the edges to upgrade your speed. Okay, let's go. Ah, uh, well, more things. I mean, we have several ISPs providers, independent, so if one fails, we have redundancy and high level of it. Yeah, when, when, when you are saying we, it actually is the, the Giffinet Foundation. We will explain this into the next slide. Okay. Well, these are the people, the, who, who, who are the participants? <laughs> Just, or, or what the official speech called them, the stakeholders. The people, the volunteers, they started this project. They, they, they were facing very precise and pragmatic problems. I don't have internet at home. And Due to historical reasons, the, the, the mayor had internet connection at, at the council because of uh, the heritage of the privatization process we follow. So the mayor were, uh, was facing, or the majors, the rural majors were facing two problems. Their citizens didn't have internet access at all and they had it at the council. So people were complaining for not having internet access at home and complaining to the council because they had internet access. So how how can we share this scarce resource with our citizens? And here is where technology can, uh, came to help us. Install an access point at the roof of the council uh, of the council hall and let the people connect to it. In a in an ordered manner. Huh? So here is where the governments start helping. Governments, uh, governments have a role by default because they are in charge of ruling the public assets and the public goods. And these are the companies that start business on top of this idea. Because initially everything was volunteer work based, but then some people, smart guys thought, oh, there, there are people who are not connecting because although we are giving workshops uh, on how to connect, 
they are not even able or they don't want to or maybe because they are elderly, elderly people or something like this they don't want to climb the roof and install their antenna then they start their own business and say I can't do this for the cost of the, the time I invest in this this evolved into full ISPs this, many of these companies are already offering for instance internet access, voice over MP backup services, all this kind, that now they are joining, they are teaming up to offer video services to compete with standard ISPs offers, okay? Next slide. There's also the associations with our... Yeah, I mean, there, there are many, many other people participating here. So, the same way you have in free software, There's, there are foundations, there are associations, of professionals, associations of volunteers, pure volunteers, pure individual people, all, all kind. Because the idea is that the project is open. At least we want to keep it open. The, so, the Infinite Foundation, the Infinite Foundation oh, is okay. something that is built here. This is this is the stack, the governance stack we, we, we are building. This is how we understand and we are shaping the concepts. So we have an infrastructure that is shared in commons. So to join the given network, which now finishes at Faust node, I must deploy something to reach him. And I accept the license. When I, I, attach, I attach to him, I accept implicitly accept the license. The license is the, the public document that guarantees the rights and duties Faust like was the, mentioned. Like the GPL, but Exactly. All right. So here is where this organization we created a foundation to look after this first the license, the same way that the Free Software Foundation is taking care of the GPL compliance. Then we have other tools in place already implemented because. Once you start building businesses on top of this and money comes into the game, some conflicts arise usually. Okay? So here the people who are making or having a profit, making a profit of the, the, the usage of the network, these people must contribute to the maintenance. Otherwise, we would disincentivize the, the, the volunteers to contribute. If I'm a volunteer and you are a professional, why should I install uh, uh, a note in my room for you, letting you pass and reach him and sell him internet access? Well, if you take care of what I contribute, it makes sense. So, for instance, if, you, if there is a mechanism to ensure a service level agreement of availability, then it makes sense for me. I cannot receive money because otherwise I would turn into a professional. I don't want to be a professional. I don't want to because I don't want to, but there are other reasons because there are some tools or some roles that cannot only be played by those who have not conflict of interest. Those are volunteers. So the result of all these layers is more resilience more uh, 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 easy of scalability and sustainability. We are strengthening and strengthening these values. Okay. Uh, these are the pr the principles that Pau already outlined. So maybe it's not worth to go through them again. So next slide or comments, questions. Uh, I'm about to finish. I promise it was an overview. It's longer than an overview, but I think there is two or. Um, so let's let's see if there, there are all. There yeah, maybe we should clarify something. Is that uh, this Infinite Foundation is a non-profit organization. It was created to to maintain all this all this stuff. And before we were talking about this Internet Exchange Point, where where uh, Infinite can access to the real Internet, and this Exchange Point. Is managed well. The connection to the exchange point is managed by the Giffinet Foundation. So there are many companies, ISPs inside the network, for instance, all of those. 
And most of them are uh, paying to the Gifinet Foundation to get an internet access through this internet exchange point. So uh, thanks to this, these uh, small companies can have a real high uh, speed internet connection, symmetric connection, uh, to offer to their customers. Because they are using the Gifinet Foundation as main ISP to, to reach the internet. So the foundation is acting as a the mother ISP. Yeah. Yeah. These are also ISPs. So they are and registered as ISPs. And if an end user wants to get a really good connection, yeah. and, and they buy directly to the foundation or it has to Yeah, but in the foundation you can you can only buy a huge amount of internet access. Which is it's 100 megabits or symmetric 100 and you, megabits. And, and you cannot, as an individual, go to the foundation, otherwise we would distort the market. And you could create an association yes. with some other friends and then go to the so foundation. It happens sense, here in Barcelona, for instance. In this sense, you can take the foundation as a second layer organization. You cannot go straight. You, as an individual, you cannot be a member, let's say, or a customer. Because otherwise we would distort the market. Yeah. This is a task inherent to ISPs. The foundation is an ISP, but a second layer ISP, because of other activities it is doing. Like, for instance, contracting the wholesale internet access to resell it, not to resell it, to share it amongst the ISPs. Why we are doing this? To get better prices due to the aggregation. All right? Yeah. And yeah, it doesn't mean that any of these companies can reach up internet access through no. any other medium. Of course. So they can uh, sell a telephonic internet access. Giving it is a very interesting social and economical experience because you see that the people at first they think, probably due to the mentality we have been taught, the way we have been shaped our minds, that we must compete against our neighbors and be the best and there once you, the people get the message and see the results they start in, by themselves and privately collaborating to, with each other so we have been we have been we, we have witnessed uh, companies that were fighting at some point in time that then they merge like, it's interesting so let's see if we finish uh, this is just an explanation of, well, it's just a small taste of the tools you can find at the website where you can declare the, the investment you are doing, the deployments. I have installed a router there in, in Plaza Catalunya and it cost me uh, this amount of uh, money if I'm a professional or this amount of time if I'm a volunteer. So this is account, it's publicly available and then we as a foundation, every, uh, uh, periodically, we are evaluating the, the investments and the, the, the usage of the network by the professionals, and then we apply the, the economic compensation system. So for instance, here, let's say that we have the orange and green and blue operators, and there is a, an installer. So this guy does not sell services, just maintain a, a node and stuff. And these are the, their contribution, OK? Uh, we always charge 5% to support the foundation, otherwise we would die and then we think that uh, all this would go away. So let's say that the, the, the maintainer invested 25% of the total investment in that accounting period. Uh, the blue said 15, the green 25 and the orange 30. And the usage they made, it's not balanced. So in this case, the orange used more than he contributed. So in the end, he has to pay some the difference. To whom? Well, to those who contributed more. And that's it. This is only for companies. Yes. Here, everything is accounted. Also, the volunteer works. Uh, here, we have to skip this to make it the simplest we could. We wanted, we included the foundation because we wanted to transmit that this has a cost. Uh, there is an operate, uh, operating cost 
to all this because the guy who is doing this calculation and all this, at least this guy must be paid. So that's it, no? Well, more stuff, you can find companies. The companies must sign an agreement to, with the foundation to ensure the service level agreements. So, and the companies may be fully committed to the project, to the idea, to the commons. So, you know, everything I do is, it's, will be contributed to the commons. Or just partially, let's say, okay, mm, or maybe not at all. Maybe I'm an operator here that I want to provide service to Lauro and give me this here so it's just to reach him. I, I, I save the work and the cost from deploying a network, a parallel network to him. Obviously, the costs, there are penalties. Those who are fully committed do not have any penalty. The partially committed have a penalty. In this compensation system we explained, we just presented briefly before. And the not committed at all, they are fully penalty. So far, we had just fully committed operators. And those who were, it's in, 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 we have also seen that there is like a sort of temptation, those who got some, uh, at some point big enough, they, they feel them strong enough to split and start their own business. In the transition, they become just half committed. So once they have to start paying higher bills, we have seen that they go back again, they roll back and they say, no, 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 that's it, we prefer to stay. Now we have uh, some ISPs interested in being natively half committed or partially committed. It's also interesting. It's not a, a, a penalty. It's that, okay, I take the business, I like the commons here, but in that case, over there I do private, private networks. No problem. Propriety networks, no problem. <coughs> anyway, uh, let's go. Uh, this way here, it's a way to for the customers as well to set to to because we rate the the as foundation we rate the installers and the maintainers and and, and the, the ISPs. So yeah, I think it's a good service for the, the, the end users to have this. So lessons learned. Huh? So we can say that we are crowdsourcing a network. I, uh, although the, not, now it's a, a, trend, a trendy word, I think it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sustainable for everybody. Huh? So the users, the enterprise and public administrations can participate based on transparency, equality and all this stuff. It's accountable. We are really, we really like the words of Dr. Uh, Eleanor Armstrong. It's a uh, Nobel Prize, who devoted her life to study common-based systems, like water uh, systems, fisheries, and stuff. She identified some principles that for sustain those. She was wondering why some of these systems are sustainable and others not. And she identified some patterns. And when we discovered her words, uh, works, we saw that we were already fulfilling many of them. And we were facing problems. And we thought maybe these problems are solved, or the way to solve them is following the, the patterns she has already identified. And it's true. So um, it's important to stay stick to the principles. There are no exceptions, especially with enterprises make, making money out of this. They also have, no, my case is special. No, no. <laughs> the, your case is special because it's not special at all. So these are the principles. Maybe we can have some transition time to let you adapt to, to, to <coughs> full, full, fulfill the, the principles. But let's set a target, a milestone. At that date, you must full, fully commit fully fulfill all these requirements. Uh, clear definitions and simple rules. This is essential. Because otherwise, it's, it, it, it look at the mess of the laws we have in this state. We have state layers, well, you, 
directives, then we have state level laws, regional laws, local laws, sector laws, it's, it's, you never know where you are. And within this confusion is where some smart people make money. Huh? I don't want this. Diversity of participation. It's essential to have companies, but it's also essential to have volunteers, and it's essential to have the public administrations. Uh, and this is what we like, this concept of the common, common pool resource. Our network, our infrastructure is a common pool resource where, where everybody contributes, and in exchange they get the right to use it. Uh, I think now we are done. Now. So next slide is when we should talk about next and check the time. So we have already consumed in the other half ten minutes. All right. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. You want to know more about some the topic. hosts? Let but us know that afterwards there is beer and nice room to chat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. By the way, thank you. My name is Tudor. I work for Sky Scanner. Some of you already know me. I see a lot of familiar faces, which happy that you guys return. Um, and after the meetup in the kitchen, we have uh, chips, we have beer, we have uh, Coca-Cola, Fanta, whatever. So it's a good place for you to mingle and ask more questions, which I think it would be more productive than if you all sit here in the dark. So. We forgot the acknowledgement and thank you, thanks for hosting yeah. us, thank you for inviting us, and thanks for coming, especially this. And thank you for presenting, of course. So, so <laughs> questions? No. Question, um, I have yes. a question. Yes. Uh, so if I want to create a node somewhere, right, and like I'm not close to any of the other Giphy people, right? How does that work? Like, I need internet connection, right? And then... Yeah, the same way the Infinite started. Yeah, the idea is that you think globally and locally. So you have to start building your own small network in your in your neighborhood, for instance. And someday, it will connect to the main network. It's the only way we can do it. And if I just want to uh, be connected to the network, I'm not... Uh, probably not routing any traffic through me. So then, um, is that enough to fulfill the, the, the agreement, the terms of the license? Yes. The license says that yeah, you can be an end user now. You don't need to pay or anything. You don't need to pay, but you agree that some somebody else can upgrade your node. So maybe you are in a very okay. well situated point, strategic point. And somebody says, okay, you, now you are using this small device, may I install this big equipment to propagate the network? He will pay for it, but he, he will install it in your node, of course, according to the availability. Yeah. If you have space restrictions, he must fulfill this space restrictions. So we are not uh, collectivizing anything. Huh? <laughs> your house is not now part of, of, of giving it because you want you had the bad idea to contribute one small note. Mm -hmm. Don't take it wrong. Yeah. yeah and also the thing is that Gifinet is a is not an homogeneous network. It's very different. Depends on the zone. And there are some zones of Gifinet which are what we call infrastructure. But there are these main central points which are called super nodes. And uh, there, then there are the, the standard normal nodes which are connecting to this those super nodes. Then this normal node is not routing any traffic. But there is another node which is called mesh or mesh networking where it's completely horizontal. So all the nodes are routing traffic from other nodes. For instance this mesh uh, network is, is normally is better in scenarios like Barcelona. Where there are many buildings, many well, the problem is the height of building. Yeah. So then you have to use a, a more opportunistic approach. Maybe this guy here sees the tower over there right yeah. properly, but the next one has a building in front of it uh, of him and it cannot connect. So then you use reflections and stuff. And in this sense, the ad hoc mode, uh, the ad hoc uh, wireless mode is better. Well, ad hoc or not? No, 
language in general. Yeah. Uh, if we start, I think the next step would be to 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 step into the technology, and there if we. This should be another talk. Yeah, I want to come back to his uh, question about what is if I'm an island with, with a new no node. Um, so I understand what Giphy is, uh, but I have problems to explain people in my neighborhood how do they take profit. And I think it would be much easier if there uh, um, was a list to find on, on GiphyNet, um, like a catalog, what um, possible advantages are there for people to connect to that island. And for me, it's very difficult to, to explain them. It's a good thing, because there is a lack of, of good reasons. Well, I think the main reason, and the easy reason, is that they will have internet access for free or for less uh, price. So for instance, uh, you can share internet access through many neighbors. You can hire a single internet connection to some ISP inside your island and share it. Yeah. And share also the cost of this internet connection. So this is this usually it works, mm -hmm. for instance. Well, sorry, can I interrupt? I think there's a lot of other advantage. But yeah, you don't depend on big company. No? So, so for what, example, what I like wanted to say, it would be nice to have something in, in a long list. Then I can pick uh, the points. Maybe we we can't do the complete work now, but that's something I, I really wish yeah. and I asked many times, or at least two or three times, and the answers were were not uh, what I was hoping for. So. Uh, but you see, I think I think there's a spirit in Giphy that you have to get involved to get the answer. Not it. You know. Oh, well, that's bit, but, but I didn't you know, get. I mean, so the more involved you get, more answer you get. You know, and that's that's yeah, okay. usually it is in a market or in a in a normal thing, it's a disadvantage, but in fact it's an advantage. You know, because in a way, in the Giphy, you don't want just a client, because there's nobody who's serving the client. You, you, you know? can't convince me. I just made a wish. All right, in, uh, in, let's take note. Mm. No? I jump in. <laughs> so, this is a collective yeah. code. So, if you detect something missing, maybe the easiest way to get involved is say, uh, my my initial target is to fulfill. I did. Task. Right. What is the outcome? I had some answers which were not very satisfying. The last one. So. When I asked the second time, I, I said, okay, it's one year ago, and I, now I ask again. And someone told me, okay, uh, wait another year. So um, that, that's not especially what I was searching for. All right, good. We are here in Barcelona, but yeah. we have the Giphy Labs. We are meeting every Thursday at 7 Every PM. Thursday? Every Thursday at 7 p.m. somewhere in Barcelona. Uh -huh. We have a a mailing list which is uh, a local one there are many mailing lists in Giphy because Giphy is a rather big project already so there are general mailing lists like the user mailing list which could be the the most uh, the biggest in terms of uh, members membership uh, but also there are uh, local and developer and other stuff mailing list. I recommend you to subscribe at least to the Giphy Barcelonese mailing I list. I subscribe to most of them. So All right, and then um, and then there we announce where we meet every every week. There are some meeting points that are stable over the months. Okay. And there are other that are normal. Another thing interesting, uh, uh, why, are, why are they nomad? Because we want to let the people invite, host these events at their organizations, their entities, and it's also a way to have that day, the, the experts there and start asking. Yeah, I think all of this is explained in this web page, <coughs> exo.cat, which is a, a local association from Barcelona, from mm -hmm. some definite users, which are organizing this uh, Gifu Lab. Yeah, I'm using Catalan, but I'm sure you can translate it. 
And here they explain where where is the next GIF lab and how is it organized. So if you want to meet these people, you can just come here and and see where they are meeting in the city. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is very useful. There are some new comers, for uh, example, now there are two, and they come to one Giffy Lab, to another Giffy Lab, and they say, I want to know more, uh, and I say to them, come more times, make more questions, be, pa be patient, because it depends on the Giffy Lab, there are more people, less people, mm, so it's like a personal investigation, researching of how it works. About 100 hours on that web page. So. Yeah, but it's better to meet physically. Yeah. It's a community more than a web page. It, hmm. It's like software. Eh? There are many, many projects, but some of them are successful and many others do not succeed, in, at least in terms of instances. Let's call them. Let's okay? discuss that over beer, maybe? Yeah. 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 So, okay. Thanks for your attention then.